California and the West Coast been hit by El Nino storms, which has caused, caused a state of emergency. And we have some drone video. Uh, check this out. These apartment buildings are teetering wow. on the verge of, of disaster. California's coastline is facing a crisis unlike anything seen before. And scientists warn that time is quickly running out. From San Diego to Crescent City, ocean waves are eroding cliffs, beaches are steadily shrinking, and entire neighborhoods now stand on unstable ground. Evacuation warnings continue to increase as the damage spreads further each year. Many fear that the famous California dream itself is slowly slipping into the sea. Here's what's really happening and why the destruction is accelerating. California's coast in crisis. California's coast is breaking apart, slowly but surely. The San Andreas Fault, an 800-mile crack running through the state, has always been a danger. But now, scientists have found something new and deeply worrying. It might be connected to another giant fault system, the Cascadia Subduction Zone in the north. If that's true, these two fault lines could move together. One earthquake could trigger the other, setting off a chain reaction of shaking across the entire west coast. Imagine a line of dominoes. One falls, and the rest quickly follow. That's what scientists fear could happen beneath California, and the danger doesn't stop there. Deep under Lake Tahoe, researchers have found hidden fault zones and signs of possible underwater landslides. If one of those faults slips, the lake's floor could shift, sending waves towards towns that sit peacefully along its shores today. At the same time, the coastline itself is crumbling. Rising sea levels, powerful storms and constant erosion are eating away at the cliffs from San Diego to Crescent City. Homes are sliding toward the ocean, roads are cracking, and beaches are shrinking. It's all happening faster than anyone expected. What makes this so alarming is how everything connects. Earthquakes can trigger landslides. Landslides can make erosion worse. Erosion weakens the land, making it easier for future quakes to cause damage. It's a growing cycle, one that's getting harder to stop. For years, California has lived with the idea of the big one, but scientists now believe it may not be just one event. It could be a series of disasters linked together, a slow-moving crisis that's already begun. The ground beneath California isn't just shaking, it's changing, and it's only the beginning. But the shaking is just the beginning. Far offshore, something massive is building, and when it breaks, entire cities could vanish in minutes. Doomsday wave, far off the coast of Northern California, lies a massive danger hidden under the sea. It's called the Cascadia Subduction Zone, a giant fault line where two huge pieces of Earth's crust slowly push against each other. For hundreds of years, pressure has been building deep below the ocean floor. Scientists warn that when this pressure finally releases, it could change everything. This kind of earthquake would not just shake the ground. It could also create what experts call a doomsday wave. A tsunami so large it could rise as tall as city buildings. Once it forms, it could race toward the coast in only a few minutes. Towns from Crescent City to Santa Barbara could face massive flooding, with streets, homes and ports completely wiped away. Even places far from the ocean are not safe. Lake Tahoe, with its steep mountain walls and hidden underwater faults, could also create its own tsunami. If a landslide happens beneath the water, Giant waves could crash into the shore almost instantly. Scientists say this has happened before and could happen again. We have already seen what these waves can do. In 2011, Japan's Tohoku earthquake sent a tsunami that destroyed entire cities. In 2004, the Indian Ocean disaster killed hundreds of thousands of people across many countries. Both started the same way a sudden shift under the sea. The most frightening part is how little time there would be to react. For local tsunamis, people might have less than 10 minutes to move to safety. That's barely enough time to understand what's happening. A wave can kill in seconds. But there's a quieter killer already here, moving underground, poisoning everything it touches. And nobody saw it coming. Saltwater invasion. Under California's coastline, a quiet disaster is growing. It's called saltwater intrusion, when seawater slowly moves into underground freshwater supplies. These supplies, called aquifers, give water to homes, farms, and cities. But now, as the ocean pushes farther inland, that clean water is turning salty. And once it does, 
it's almost impossible to fix. Two big things are making this worse. Rising sea levels and sinking land. As the sea rises higher each year and the ground slowly sinks from pumping too much groundwater, salt water can move deeper and faster underground. It's a silent invasion happening right beneath people's feet. The results are already showing up. Wells that once gave fresh, clean water are now full of salt. Farmers are watching their crops dry out because the soil is becoming too salty to grow anything. Pipes, pumps and water systems are breaking down because salt eats away at metal. Even buildings and roads near the coast are being damaged from the inside as the salty water weakens their foundations. Coastal aquifers used to stay in balance, fresh water pushing out salt water, but that balance is breaking. To fight back, towns are drilling deeper wells, building costly desalination plants, and bringing water from faraway places. Each of these solutions costs millions of dollars, and small communities are struggling to keep up. At the same time, California is losing its natural protectors, dunes and wetlands. These used to act like walls, keeping salt water out, but erosion, storms and development are wearing them away. Salt kills the water, but something even stranger is happening. The land itself is sinking, and in some places, it's dropping inches every single year. The sinking coast, California's coast, is slowly disappearing. From the outside, the beaches and cliffs still look beautiful, but beneath the surface, something alarming is happening. The land itself is sinking, even as the sea keeps rising. Together, they form a double threat that's eating away at the state's famous coastline. This sinking isn't just nature's work. Part of it comes from humans pulling too much groundwater out of the earth. When that underground water is removed, the soil above starts to compact and sink. Add in natural tectonic movements and softer, weaker coastal soil. And the result is a coastline that's slowly slipping down while the ocean pushes in. New satellite data shows that parts of California's coast are dropping inch by inch every year. In the Bay Area, king tides are now flooding streets and homes that used to stay dry. In Ventura and Monterey, cliffs are collapsing faster than ever, taking roads, trails and even buildings with them. Each storm, each wave, cuts a little deeper into the land. The danger doesn't stop at the shoreline. As the ground sinks, vital infrastructure is at risk. Pipelines, power grids and coastal highways are all built on shifting foundations. Cracks are forming, salt water is seeping into underground cables, and repairs are becoming more expensive each year. What makes this crisis so haunting is its quiet pace. It's not a single disaster, it's a slow-motion collapse that's reshaping the state's edge in real time. California's coastline, once a symbol of beauty and strength, is proving to be fragile and temporary. The ocean rises, the ground falls, time is running out, so can California be saved, or is the fight already lost? After the fall, even as California's coastline breaks and sinks, the story is not over. Across the state, people are working hard to protect what they can. Scientists, builders, and local communities are creating new ways to live with a changing ocean. The fight to save California's edge has already begun. In many cities, seawalls are being built to hold back rising waves. Harbors are being redesigned to handle flooding and strong tides. Fault mapping has become more detailed, helping experts understand where the ground might shift next. These steps cannot stop nature, but they can help reduce damage and give people more time to prepare. Some towns are making a brave choice called managed retreat. This means slowly moving homes, schools and roads away from danger zones before disaster strikes. It's not easy, but it helps keep families safe and gives the land a chance to heal. At the same time, new projects are bringing hope. In Monterey Bay, wetland restoration is helping nature fight back. These wetlands act like sponges, soaking up flood water and protecting nearby areas. In Los Angeles, Desalination plants are turning salty seawater into fresh drinking water. In San Francisco, designers are planning floating neighborhoods, small communities built to rise and fall with the tides. All of these efforts show one thing clearly. California is not giving up. The state is learning to adapt, to rebuild, and to live differently in the face of change. The coastline may be shrinking, but the spirit of the people remains strong. 
They have faced fires, droughts, and earthquakes before. Each time, they have found a way forward. California's edge may be sinking, but its people are rising, stronger, smarter, and ready for what comes next. People are fighting back, but every seawall comes with a hidden price. And some coastal towns are learning you can't hold back the ocean forever. Lines in the sand. Saving California's coastline comes with a huge price tag. Every year, billions of dollars are spent on seawalls, levees, and endless sand replacement projects. The goal is simple, to hold back the ocean. But the truth is, every barrier built against nature has a cost, both in money and in what's lost along the way. Seawalls can protect homes and roads for a while, but they also change how beaches work. When waves hit a wall instead of sand, they bounce back stronger and wash away the beach in front of it. Over time, the shore disappears, leaving only a line of concrete where soft sand once was. It's a hard trade. Safety for beauty, protection for nature. The town of Pacifica shows what this fight looks like up close. Streets and buildings have already been swallowed by the sea. Each storm brings new damage, and repair bills keep growing. Yet people still live and build along the cliffs, hoping the next wall or fix will hold a little longer. Despite all the warnings, new homes and resorts continue to rise near the water. The coast is too valuable to leave behind. The views, the tourism, and the lifestyle make it hard to walk away. But the same land that brings profit also brings danger. It's a moral and financial tug of war between what people want and what the planet allows. This is the paradox of California's edge. It's too costly to abandon, but too unstable to truly save. The ocean always wins in the end, but humans keep drawing new lines in the sand, hoping this time the tide will stop. For now, the struggle continues, a fight between money, memory, and a moving sea. Small towns struggle, but California's biggest cities face an even bigger threat. Millions live on the edge, and the water is rising fast. The cities at the edge. California's biggest cities were built to face the ocean. Now, the ocean is starting to fight back. Rising sea levels and stronger tides are pushing into streets, harbors, and neighborhoods once thought safe. From San Francisco to San Diego, the state's most famous coastal cities are standing on shifting ground. In San Francisco, king tides already flood parts of the Embarcadero several times each year. Sidewalks turn into shallow ponds, and waves splash over the sea wall that once kept the bay at bay. Engineers warn that by the middle of this century, parts of the waterfront could be underwater full-time. Farther south, the port of Long Beach, one of the busiest shipping centers in the world, faces its own ticking clock. Flood maps show that by mid-century, storm surges could reach storage yards and power stations. Billions of dollars in trade, fuel, and jobs depend on keeping those waters out. In San Diego, the threat is just as real. Military bases, coastal highways, and nearby neighborhoods all sit within the rising flood zone. The Navy is already raising docks and reinforcing piers, but entire communities may have to move inland within a few decades. Across the coast, city planners are rushing to act. Some push for seawalls and pumps, others argue for managed retreat, slowly moving away from danger instead of fighting it. Meanwhile, the insurance market is breaking down as companies pull out of high-risk zones, leaving homeowners without coverage. Cities are flooding, but while the coast drowns, the rest of California burns. Fire, flood, quake, drought, all hitting at once. This is the new normal. The cities at the edge. California's biggest cities were built to face the ocean. Now, the ocean is starting to fight back. Rising sea levels and stronger tides are pushing into streets, harbors, and neighborhoods once thought safe. From San Francisco to San Diego, the state's most famous coastal cities are standing on shifting ground. In San Francisco, King tides already flood parts of the Embarcadero several times each year. Sidewalks turn into shallow ponds, and waves splash over the seawall that once kept the bay at bay. Engineers warn that by the middle of this century, parts of the waterfront could be underwater full-time. Farther south, the port of Long Beach, one of the busiest shipping centers in the world, faces its own ticking clock. Flood maps show that by mid-century, Storm surges could reach storage yards and power stations. Billions of dollars in trade, fuel, and jobs depend on keeping those waters out. 
In San Diego, the threat is just as real. Military bases, coastal highways, and nearby neighborhoods all sit within the rising flood zone. The Navy is already raising docks and reinforcing piers, but entire communities may have to move inland within a few decades. Across the coast, city planners are rushing to act. Some push for seawalls and pumps, others argue for managed retreat, slowly moving away from danger instead of fighting it. Meanwhile, the insurance market is breaking down as companies pull out of high-risk zones, leaving homeowners without coverage. From collapse comes creativity. New homes float. Old reefs return. But none of it matters without one thing. Learning to move with nature, not against it. The future. Out of California's coastal collapse comes something unexpected. Innovation. From the ruins of lost cliffs and flooded streets, new ideas are rising. Engineers, scientists, and communities are beginning to rethink how people live with the ocean, not against it. The future may not look like the California of the past, but it could be stronger, smarter, and more in tune with nature. Along the coast, builders are designing amphibious homes, houses that can float during floods and settle back when the water lowers. Wetlands are being restored to act as natural shields, slowing down waves and soaking up flood water. These living landscapes protect people while giving wildlife a home once again. In some areas, solar farms are replacing risky oceanfront developments. Where luxury homes once stood, clean energy fields now power thousands of houses safely inland. Out in the sea, old oil rigs are being turned into artificial reefs, giving new life to fish, coral, and marine plants. What was once a symbol of pollution is becoming a foundation for renewal. Rivers that were once blocked and polluted are being reopened, flowing again through reclaimed marshes. These natural waterways help carry excess rainwater away from cities, reducing flood risks and restoring balance to the land. The new vision for California's coast isn't about control, it's about cooperation. It's about learning to live with shifting tides, softer ground, and a changing planet. This approach marks a turning point where survival depends on creativity, not resistance. California has always led the world in reinvention. From technology to culture, it has turned crisis into progress. Now it has the chance to lead again, showing how a broken coastline can become a blueprint for living in harmony with the earth. The land will shift, the sea will rise, but California endures. The edge isn't the end. It's where everything begins again, the edge of tomorrow. California has always lived on the edge of land, of possibility, of change. The ground shakes, the ocean rises, and the cliffs crumble. But the story continues. Nothing here is permanent, and maybe that's the lesson the Earth has been trying to teach all along. The coast was never meant to stay still. The waves will keep moving, the sand will keep shifting, and the planet will keep reshaping itself. Humanity can't stop that, not with walls, not with money, not with willpower alone. But California has never been known for giving up. Even as its edges fall away, it finds ways to rebuild, to adapt, and to start again. The future won't be about fighting nature, it will be about learning from it. The wisdom now lies in movement, in flowing with the earth instead of standing against it. Cities will rise in new places, coastlines will redraw themselves, and people will learn to live closer to the rhythms of the world around them. The edge is not an ending, it's a beginning. From loss comes renewal, and from collapse comes creation. Every generation before has faced change. This one just happens to face it on a global scale. It takes courage to rebuild when the ground won't stop moving. It takes faith to plant roots in shifting soil. But somewhere between the sea and the sky, California will find its balance again. Because that's what this place has always done, turned disaster into discovery and endings into evolution. The coastline may fade, the cliffs may fall, but the spirit that built California will remain. The edge of tomorrow is already here, and it's calling us to begin again. Stronger, wiser, and still unbroken. California's edge is changing fast, but the story doesn't end here. Change is already happening, and awareness is the first step. So, if you care about the planet's future, hit like, share, and subscribe to support the voices fighting for change. Together, we can help protect what's left and rebuild what's next.